What's going on, everyone? My name is Matthew Gonzali, and welcome to a show that I like to call Reasons Live. Basically, it's a show dedicated specifically towards all of you out there watching this who struggle with suicidal thoughts, like I once did myself, to remind you that there are dozens, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, dicillion, infinite reasons why you should choose life over death. Now, the topic of today's episode is an often overlooked art form that brings a lot of people joy in the world, and that's poetry. And some of you might not be poetry people. Some of you might be poetry people. If you're not, I highly, highly recommend you give poetry a try. Writing poetry slash reading poetry. It is one of my favorite things in my life. It really is. My personal favorite poem is Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven and a lot of other of his stuff. He's my favorite poet ever. I also love Shakespearean sonnets. Now, I know, cliche, but they're classics for a reason. And that's what it can be like for you. Say you don't have a big, gigantic, overwhelming reason to live that one would expect to have. It's okay. It's wonderfully, it's perfectly okay to just live for the quote-unquote small things to bring you joy. Like your favorite horror poem, your favorite love poem, and anything along those lines. It's okay to live for poetry. And doing that, it can help build you up in to something that you feel is one of those big reasons. You know what I mean? It's basically a step stool, a step ladder, a set of stairs to an even greater thing that I know you will find, my friends. Took me a while to find it, but eventually I found my reason to stay. And it was the little things like poetry, like superhero movies, like Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter, that show, that kept me here going as I built my way, worked my way up to that. You catch my drift? It's okay. I highly recommend Edgar Allan Poe stuff for beginners. Like I said, I know it's a bit cliche, but classics for a reason. Anyway, before we get going, I would like to have a quick 1v1 with you, if that's okay. Now, down in the link in the description below, I put five mental health resources that you can use. I put the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, the Crisis Text Line, National Sexual Assault Hotline, the Trevor Project, and the Trans Lifeline. Now, maybe you've seen their numbers before, and unfortunately, they might be just that, just numbers to you. But here's the thing. On top of putting their respective numbers, I've also taken the liberty of putting links to their websites so you can check out things such as their FAQ pages, you know what I mean? See what they're about. See what happens when you call. And when you're done listening to my ramblings today, I have a favor to ask you. Could you please check out the first link in the description below? And that'll take you over to an article by BuzzFeed that explains in a lot more detail than I could ever explain what happens when you call BuzzFeed. What happens when you call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, I apologize, and the Crisis Text Line. It does a great job at scraping away those stereotypes and stigmas that have come to prevent a lot of us from reaching out for help. Now, it's still a scary thing to reach out for help. Some of us, it will be our first time. And... Yes, it's very daunting and intimidating, but I promise you the results are worth it. And if you don't find a resource that you feel properly helps you at first, please don't give up. Keep going. With me, there was one or two things that I tried that didn't really make a difference in me, but I kept going and I kept fighting for that big reason, that big form of help, and it worked out in the end for me. Trust me, if it can happen to me, it can most certainly happen to you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And ha uh, My name is Matthew Gonzali, and remember, there's always a reason to smile.